Beyond the Mic with Sean Dillon. We're joined on the star line by a Stanford grad who's been on the New York Times bestselling list for his work on personal finance. He's written the companion to his initial book, I Will Teach You to Be Rich, The Journal. We welcome Ramit Sethi. Great to be here. Ramit, let's go beyond the mic. You started back in 2004. Newsletter, a dream of helping people obtain a rich life. How is the journal the next logical step on this path? You know, there are some people who love the idea of picking up a book and learning about the difference between a Roth IRA and a traditional IRA. You know, a million people have bought that book and I'm happy. But I also realize that there are some people who will just never get a book like that. And there are some people who just instead want an easier way to start thinking about money. They don't want intimidating numbers. They want a way to dream. And that's exactly why I created the journal. How hard is it for people to understand money? I mean, there's difficulty in saving. I have problems. We all do. You know, it is hard. It is hard because first we're taught that money is scarce. Okay. And we're, we're taught phrases even by our parents. Like we don't talk about money in this family. Money doesn't grow on trees. And we hear that over and over and we absorb it. And then next, as we become adults, we lose the ability to zoom out. So most of us, when it comes to our money, it just feels like drudgery. We get our paycheck, we get our bills, we pay it, and maybe there's a little bit left over. That's not a great way to feel about money. Nope. Every time most people think about money, they use words like anxiety and overwhelm and guilt. So how are you supposed to actually enjoy it if all you feel is negativity? People are concerned with rising costs, stagnating incomes. How concerned are you about a upcoming recession? I'm more concerned with what people are doing with their personal finances. We can't control inflation. We can't control the price of celery at the grocery store. We can control how much we save to some extent, and we can control where our money is invested. Those are things we can do. So uh, I have a lot of concerns about rising costs, especially for housing. It's a huge deal. But in my experience, there are a lot of things that we can do on an individual level to take control of our money. What concept slips people's minds? They just can't get a, a grasp of. <laughs> uh, the, the first thing is uh, when I ask people, what is your rich life? They look at me with deer in the eyes, deer in the headlights eyes. They go, what do you mean? I go, what's your rich life? They go, I want to do what I want, when I want. I said, okay, that sounds pretty good. So what do you want? And they are stumped. You see, most of us have never actually thought about what our rich life is. We're just living day to day, trying to pay the bills and make sure we get by. But if we don't have a vision for what we want to do with our money and how we want to get there, it's no surprise that we don't really treat money with a lot of respect and we don't have an urgency around it. So my work is really focused on helping people get vivid with what their rich life is. And then we can use money to get there. What's the financial concept that may evolve from when you first started back in 2004, when you were still in Stanford to today? I think this concept of a rich life has gotten a lot deeper since then. Um, I'll give you an example. There are lots of ways for example, people want financial freedom. That's a great goal. But there are a lot of different ways to get there. And that has evolved. Some people want to cut their spending dramatically, save 55% of their income, and retire early. That's known as the FIRE community. That's totally valid. Other people want to increase their income, negotiate their salary, start a side business, and have millions of dollars in the bank. That's also totally valid. There are lots of different ways to get to the same goal of financial freedom. I think I've become a lot more open to that, um, you know, as I've met more and more people who have chosen different paths. Ramit Sethi is here beyond the mic, and it's time for the Rocky and Eight. Ramit, it's just eight random questions. Answer with the first thing that comes to your mind. There is absolutely no pressure. Okay. I'm feeling pressure. Seriously, no pressure. <laughs> you manage dozens of employees. What was the last gift you gave them? The last gift that I, every, every year on their anniversary, they receive a gift from my company. So it's happened in the last couple of weeks. What's the first thing people usually notice about you? My eyebrows. Why? I, 
Uh, you'd have to ask God. I have no idea why I got these eyebrows, but I did. We all have mentors, people who support us, have our back, and help us become better people. Who have you learned the most from? Uh, my parents, for sure. How did they help you? They set an example. What's possible? You don't have to have a lot of money to live a rich life. And they shared lessons just by doing what they did in terms of education and hard work. If you start them out young, they don't know any different about savings, etc. How <laughs> would you help children manage money the easiest? Yeah. The best way that I would help children learn about money is to help their parents become confident with money. When parents are confident and they have a vision and money is joyful to them, then they pass that on to their kids. It all starts with the parents. What was the last thing you bought? Oh, the last thing I bought was uh, lunch in New York City. Remy, do you snore? <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> as my wife will tell you. What was something you dreaded doing that you end up loving? Working out. I think everybody hates leg day. I mean, leg day sucks. There you go. How has your wife, Cassandra, changed you for the better? She's made me more spontaneous. I love that about her. In which way? If you left me to my own devices, I would spend the rest of my life sitting on the couch, optimizing my spreadsheet. <laughs> and she has taught me that we have to take time to celebrate. And, and, and it's important to create these memories. And she has really inspired me in that way. What was the last thing you celebrated? Uh, we celebrated um, making a decision to spend a month in New York. And we celebrated it once we got here. We gave each other a high five and we said we did it. If you're enjoying these conversations, please check out another Beyond the Mic episode to find more actors, artists, and people you need to know. We'd also appreciate a like and subscribe on the Good Pods app. It's time for the back half with author of I Will Teach You to Be Rich, the journal, Ramit Sethi, Beyond the Mic. Ramit, your goal from the beginning was helping others. How has your goals evolved from 2004 to today? I think it's become more refined in terms of um, helping people really st get started with their money. It's possible to get really complicated with money, really advanced. And there are people who do that well. I think I have become more and more comfortable helping people just get started. What is your rich life? Let me show you how to get your investments rolling. When you do that, it is transformational for how much you can take control of your life. What was your biggest success? Uh, my biggest success, having good relationships in my life. You know, it's not financial, but it affects everything there is. What was your biggest failure? Uh, my biggest failure, probably making, making some bad decisions in business, uh, some bad hires, and just bad strategy decisions. It's time for one big question with Ramit Sethi author of I Will Teach You To Be Rich, the journal beyond the mic. Ramit, what's the one thing that you are still trying to improve yourself? I'm trying to become more empathetic. Money is such a hard conversation to have with people. It is hard, but I love it. I, I love that my work allows me to develop personally as well. I think that that's the dream. Um, I want to become more empathetic because it helps me in my work. It also just makes me a better person. To be able to talk to somebody who makes a completely different choice than I would and to be able to really try to see it from their perspective, that's empathy. Ramit, how do people's negative thoughts and actions keep them from living a rich life? Is it confidence or is it just negativity? Sometimes it is believing a story and thinking that it is the truth. Phrases like, we don't talk about money in this family or money doesn't grow on trees. People hear that enough and they actually start to believe that it's true, but it's not. It's just a story. Okay. Sometimes people don't have the information. They simply have never heard of a Roth IRA or they do not know that if they invest this much per month, they will become a millionaire. It is pure and simple math. And sometimes it is a lack of confidence in themselves or in the people around them. Uh, I don't think I can trust myself to stick to this plan. But the good news is that all of these things can be changed. Every single person can and should live a richer life. How has your life become so rich and yet goals you still have yet to accomplish? My life's become rich because uh, I'm doing what I love. I'm with people I love and I get to see other people using my material and applying it. They send me DMs on Instagram and TikTok and they show me how they're living their rich life. I can't think of a better job. So that has been very rewarding. It took a while from book to sequel. 
<laughs> so what's the next project you're working on? I, I, that's a good question. I get that question a lot. I'm, you know what? As my wife taught me, just celebrate. I'm staying in the moment. I'm appreciating this journal. I'm present. And then whatever happens next will happen next. Rumi, where can people find you online? They can find me at my website, IWT.com. That's I Will Teach You To Be Rich. And you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and of course, my newsletter. He snores, dreads leg day, and learns the most from his parents. His book, I Will Teach You To Be Rich, the journal is available now. We thank Ramit Seti for taking the time to talk with us today. It's been a pleasure. And now, my friends, is a Beyond the Mic shortcut. Thank you.